the railways of the Wirral Peninsula were dominated by the GWR and LMS companies, whose joint ownership of the Chester and Birkenhead Railway allowed access to Liverpool for the GWR from Paddington, whose last through services were run in March 1967. The Midland region of British Railways took over the western region's shed at Chester in 1958, and LMS locomotives gradually began to predominate the railway scene of the world. This film shows the last few years of steam traction in the mid-1960s, when ex-LMS 264 tanks ran on fast timings between Chester and Birkenhead, before handing over to larger motive power on the through trains. Some of the last Crab 260s drew enthusiasts to the line, and there is good coverage of the 9Fs on Shotton Steelworks trains from Birkenhead docks. The story begins on the 4th of March 1967, when two steam specials ran to Chester, commemorating the end of through Paddington services to Birkenhead on the Wirral, hauled by Castle-class locomotives. 4079 Pendennis Castle heads north of Banbury on Propredi Bank. The great interest shown by enthusiasts and public alike on this day is demonstrated here at Birmingham Snow Hill as 7029 Clun Castle arrives on the Zulu tour. The two castles were serviced at Chester. Many enthusiasts forsaking the run to Birkenhead to see the two resplendent engines together. Signalled away by London and North Western signals, controlled from the adjacent Chester No. 4 box, the castles headed south, although 7029 would return for one more tour the following day. As if to underline the joint nature of the route to Birkenhead at Chester, Stanier 8F 48453 of Stoke Shed heads for the Wirral behind No. 4 box in 1963. She was built at Swindon in 1944. The former GWR depot is on the right. A mile and a half out of Chester was Upton by Chester, opened as a halt in July 1939. Stanier two-cylinder 264 tank 42647 calls for little custom on the 1025 Birkenhead Woodside to Chester. mid-1960s, passenger traffic to and from Birkenhead was generally in the hands of Stanier's two-cylinder tanks. As some of these trains were through Paddington workings, they ran as expresses, and hence the sight of these engines sporting Class A headlamps on these workings. These views are near Mollington, whose station was closed in March 1960 to passenger traffic. Freight traffic to and from Birkenhead docks and the oil refineries around Ellesmere port was in the hands of all sorts of motive power. 8Fs were a common sight.
But a sighting of an LNER designed A2, such as Blue Peter, happened just the once. In very poor light, even though it was August 1966, she is heading north for Hooton after a visit to Hollyhead. As she was next routed for Manchester via Ellesmere Port following a run round at Hooton, there is also the rear view of a Pacific running tender first under express passenger headlights. Just over five miles from Chester is Capenhurst. A standard class five heads north to Birkenhead and will soon leave the double track section at Ledgeham where the line became quadrupled to Birkenhead. Hooton was the junction for lines to West Kirby and via Ellesmere Port to Hellsby and Warrington. The West Kirby line had been closed in the early 1960s, now called the Rural Way, a country park. But freight traffic here was heavy, with much interchange of traffic. Freight from the south had to reverse here for Ellesmere Port or onwards to the northwest. One of the Birkenhead 9S, in this case one of the ex Prosty Board examples, is marshalling a train in the freight yards south of the station. Birkenhead Shed was the last home for the Horwich-built Crab 260s. 42942 was indeed the last of its class and was cleaned by local volunteers for certain workings. This is one of them, when the Book Black 5 was mysteriously failed and it worked the 1006 August 1966 bank holiday excursion from Rock Ferry to Land Dudno in return. We will see more of her later in the programme. The GWR and LMWR joint line from Hooton to Helsby ran onto the Cheshire Line's committee tracks at West Cheshire Junction, Helsby, and after just over three miles of single track, reached Molesworth, where 48344 of Trafford Park surrenders the token to the signalman on its way towards Manchester. The junction served Chester Northgate by a DMU service from Manchester in the early 1960s, the passenger service on the Helsby line finishing throughout as long ago as 1875. In that year, Chester Northgate was opened and continued in service until October 1969. Moldsworth was a busy station, handling a considerable amount of agricultural traffic, employing a regular staff of shunters in the goods yard. Austerity 280-90392 of Birkenhead Shed is in ex-works condition coming off the Helsby branch with a mixed freight in early 1962. The track on the left of this view is for trains to Helsby to be held before the crossover road to the single line proper. Signalman Herbert Woodward collects the token from the crew of the WD and returns it to its instrument in the 34-lever Moldsworth Junction box at the end of the station platform. Next along is 90566, also of Birkenhead, returning home via Helsby. station on the branch was Helsby and Alvinley, closed by the 22nd of October 1966 when Britannia William Shakespeare passed through on an enthusiast special for the world. On our way back to Hooton, we catch up with 70,004 again at Ellesmere Port. The tour was run by the Liverpool University Public Transport Society from Liverpool to Guide Bridge and back to Birkenhead Dot, where we will catch up with it later.
The line through Ellesmere Port saw many engine movements to and from the industrial area by the Manchester Ship Canal. The Ship Canal was opened in 1894. Ellesmere Port was once known as Whitby Locks when the Shropshire Union Canal reached here in 1795. Several large traders were in the district, serving paper and flour mills, but the largest traffic is at the oil companies of Esso and Shell at Stanlow. The railway interest is in the Manchester Ship Canal Railway, which had a depot here and until the early 1960s were served by steam, laterally the Hunslet 18-inch austerity design. Dieselisation came to the system in 1963 when five of these 48 ton Sentinel diesel hydraulic locomotives were delivered. They had 325 horsepower Rolls Royce eight cylinder engines. Back at the busy junction of Hooton to continue our journey north to Birkenhead, seven miles away. These views are looking north. Hooton's south box is in the distance. Four two five nine seven departs north for Birkenhead. Dereliction of the freight sidings is setting in. was the next station and one of Stania's two-cylinder 264 tanks hurries by. Note also an LNWR lower quadrant signal still in use. On the last day of through services to Birkenhead, specials were run. This is 92203 on an SLS tour towards Chester. Meanwhile, a 264 tank tows two 9Fs amid much smoke. A rare visitor to the world was a B1 from the eastern region, this one from Wakefield Depot. In 1985, a new station was opened at Bromborough Rake. In 1966, a Stanier tank hurries past the site. Now on to Spittle. Warrington's 45375 wheels a very long freight through the station, including cattle wagons for the Irish meat trade through Birkenhead docks. A station at Port Sunlight was opened in 1914. It served the new town built by William Lever for his employees at his soap works. The station was brought into public use in 1927. In May 1988, a transport extravaganza was held at the works. As electrification of the line south of Rock Ferry to Hooton was by now in operation, it allowed a 50th year celebration of the 1938 electric stop to be run. The preserved LMS unit from the Liverpool to Southport line is seen passing. Arriving up the branch from the Stork Margarine Factory complex is GWR Prairie 4566, top and tailing with Ginty 47298, which ran a shuttle service over the small branch. Bebbington and New Ferry Station was so named from 1895. From its opening in 1840, it was just Bebbington, the name it carries today.
three of Birkenhead's nine Fs pass. Rock Ferry opened in 1860, replacing Rock Lane of 1846. Again, four tracks went through the station, where today there are two. The standard engine is arriving on a Birkenhead to Paddington Express. The Mersey Railway opened to this station in 1891, and via its junction, north of the station, the GWR were able to introduce a service in 1898 from Paddington right into Liverpool at Central's low-level station. In fact, for a short time, there was even a through coach to Folkestone for the continent on this train, which was slipped at Reading. The SLS tour of the 5th of March 1967 is again seen heading south behind 9F 92203. After Birkenhead Woodside closed in 1967, Rock Ferry only saw service from the north via the Mersey Railway's electrified line to Liverpool and the DMU service from Chester terminated here. But back in 1967, we can follow the joint line's route into Woodside. On the west side of the line was the combined GW and LMS sheds at Birkenhead. The original Chester and Birkenhead Railway terminated at Monks Ferry in 1844, itself an extension from Grange Lane of 1840. By 1878, there was a need for an even larger station, and this was reached through a murky 565-yard tunnel. Woodside Station was 210 miles from Paddington, the GWR's most northerly station, but it was a joint station with the LMS. Black 5 44730 provides that connection. Woodside had five platforms, largely under a double arch, cast iron and glazed roof. There were two middle roads for engine release and empty stock storage. Woodside Station Concourse backed onto a booking hall and canopied main entrance, but it was never used for this purpose. It was used for parcel traffic, and the waiting and refreshment rooms went mainly unnoticed by passengers. Instead, a temporary entrance of 1878 was used on the side of the building, which led directly to the Birkenhead Corporation's bus station, and from there to the Liverpool ferries. The motor vessel Mountwood of 1960 arrives at Woodside for more custom while across the Mersey, Liverpool beckons with the famous landmark of the Royal Liver Insurance Building crowned by the largest clock in Britain. In front of the Liver Building is the Liverpool landing stage at Pierhead, behind which was a bus terminal. Mersey ferries from and to the world also served Wallasey. This is the Motor Vessel Overchurch, built in 1961 by local and famous Birkenhead shipbuilders Camel Lairds, arriving and departing for Wallasey. As Overchurch departs for Wallasey, we follow the coastline of Birkenhead towards the Woodside Pier to see Mountwood again coming into dock at Liverpool Pierhead. Railway passengers qualified for cheaper fares on the ferries issued by Birkenhead Corporation who ran them. In the 1902 railway timetable, these were priced at one old penny, but the nighttime rate between half past midnight and 4 a.m. was six times this amount, or two and a half new pence.
when Chester was a thriving port, Liverpool was a small fishing village, but from the early 18th century, the Dee silted up and cut off Chester's trading lifeline. Liverpool grew into one of the largest and most prosperous ports in the world. By 1880, lines of docks stretched for seven miles along the banks of the Mersey. Passenger liners were commonplace, and the LMWR ran a service to Riverside Station for the traffic. However, as the 1960s wore on, the trade ceased with the coming of air travel. The last liners to call regularly were from the Canadian Pacific Company. This is Empress of Canada, one of three Empress ships for the company, and the last to be withdrawn. She was built in 1961 and sold 10 years later in 1971. She was 650 feet long and weighed in at 27,284 tons. Returning to Birkenhead Woodside, 42597 departs on a through Paddington service that it will haul as far as Chester. But these through services came to an end on the 5th of March 1967. Two specials were run on this day by the Stevenson Locomotive Society, while at Birkenhead the specials were worked to Chester and back, the first by 9F92234. For the last day, Birkenhead turned out Stania 264 tank 42616 as station pilot. The second special was worked by 9F92203. Woodside station had probably never been so busy since it opened in 1878. By the time 92203 came to back out light after departure of its train to Birmingham, the platforms became deserted once again. Before the 9F hauled specials worked to Chester, the main train from Birmingham arrived behind a well-turned-out 44680. 92203 waits in platform 2 to take over. The first of the two specials to return to Birmingham was worked by 44680. The headboard is affixed to the top lamp bracket, or where it is now, since relocation to the side due to engines working under overhead electrification at this time, March 1967, the fire is well and truly built up for the run south. Smoke will not be a nuisance anymore after this date.
the other special from Birmingham has arrived behind 7029 Clun Castle, fittingly the last ex-Western design loco to arrive at Birkenhead. The shed area teemed with enthusiasts while both tour engines were serviced. 7029 was in Great Western livery, although it never carried it in service, being built by British Railways in May 1950. Four four six eight zero was only a month younger than 7029, built at Crewe in June 1950. As one of the last built Black Fives, she was four inches longer than the earlier members of her class, built from 1934. At this time she was shedded at Crewe South, from where she was withdrawn in the September. Activities on the main line past the shed included the site of 42616, the station pilot, shunting empty coating stock. Her duties at Birkenhead finished shortly afterwards, and she was transferred away to Low Moor Shed to become the last of the Stania two-cylinder 264 tanks to be withdrawn. And finally, on this day, the two tour engines come off shed to work their tour trains to Birmingham Snow Hill. 7029 was on the last train to ensure a GWR-type locomotive worked the last steam train into Snow Hill on its last day of operation as a mainline station. However, Birkenhead Shed still had until November the 6th, 1967 to service steam engines. As a joint shed of 16 roads, the Great Western Building is on the right as we pan towards the LMS Shed. The coaling and ash plant were to the side of the LMS Building, a 9F waits for servicing. Nine two one two one comes off the ramp of the polling stage, one of many two ten o's shedded here at the end. The sheds, like all on BR in the last days of steam, took on an air of dereliction. Birkenhead's large allocation of nine F's, whose main duties were working the Bidston Dock to Shotton iron ore trains, moved about among withdrawn examples of other classes, like the Crab 260s, which had been displaced from passenger service. Also losing their passenger turns were the 264 tanks. 42616 has Everton scrawled on its grime covered side tanks, someone across the Mersey having an affinity with one of its football teams. 48180 of Oxley Shed reverses onto the shed. Oxley, being an ex-Western shed, would have supplied a churchward of Pollock 280 only a few years before. The diversity of traffic flow to Birkenhead can be seen as WD90233 of Wakefield comes on shed, having worked a trans-Pennine freight from Murfield, Yorkshire. Black 545307 is doing shed pilot duties. She was from Liverpool Edge Hill Depot. Coal wagons seem to be within 45307's capability, but when it comes to moving dead engines about, that is another matter. She comes in for some really rough treatment, not helped by the fact that the sandboxes are empty.
In an attempt to stop this slipping, there is a vain attempt to operate the steam sanders for what few grains may be left in the boxes. It is time to leave the shed and continue our journey around the world. On the 6th of August 1966, the LCGB and Branch Line Society ran a rail tour to Birkenhead docks behind Crab 42942. It is seen passing Neston. As can be seen, the tour was made up of brake vans. The tour had been booked for a Great Western pannier tank, but this failed, and 42942 hastily substituted. However, there had been some earlier excitement when it reached 64 miles per hour at Mollington near Chester. Not a bad ride in four-wheeled brake vans. Two months later, on the 22nd of October 1966, the crab was back in the docks on another tour, but with more comfortable accommodation. It is the tour seen earlier with Britannia 70004 at Ellesmere Port, which had worked as far as Green Lane Junction, Birkenhead, where 42942 took over, and now seen at Canning Street North, joining the docks railway. The tour travelled towards Duke Street, with Corporation Road on the right of the picture. The pilotman walking in front of the train was responsible for controlling the level crossings in the passage of the train. At the junction of Corporation Road and Beaufort Road, the tour curves right, where, in half a mile, it will reach the western entrance to the docks, which was an end-on junction with the Wirral Railway. Finally, the tour leaves the docks and will rejoin the X Great Central Line south at Bidston.
the Birkenhead Dock Railways were largely owned by the Mersey Docks and Harbour Company. This was due to the Birkenhead Company overspending and by 1858 it was incorporated into the Mersey Docks control. It was therefore home to a number of industrial steam locomotives and this was relived in 1971 by the running of the Birkenhead Docker No. 2 rail tour. The loco used was an Andrew Barclay of 1918 called Efficient. The train of three brake vans and six open wagons came from BR and started from Duke Street sidings. The 10 mile tour began and throughout the proceedings was shadowed by diesel shunters to help in shunting manoeuvres and reversals. Efficient was brought to the docks in 1970 by the Liverpool Locomotive Preservation Group. Its previous owners were McKechnie Chemicals of Widnes. The Liverpool Group had premises in a loco shed in Birkenhead Road, Seacombe. By 1972 another engine, Lucy, had been acquired for the Birkenhead Docker No. 3 tour. The pair are seen near Morpeth Dock. By 1978, Lucy was fully restored and repainted. On July the 22nd, she had charge of Docker No. 4. She was nine years older than Efficient, being built by Avonside of Bristol in 1909 and given the works number 1568. By this date, both the engines were housed at Steamport Southport. The usual tour of the docks proceeded, viewing many ships. 225 passengers were carried in four freight vans and three mineral wagons, borrowed from BR. Lucy shows a fine turn of speed. She had also come from Witness, once the property of Hutchinson's estate and dock company, a true dock engine. At Canning Road, Lucy is passed by 25258, a Salzer Type 2. We can now look at the ex Great Central route through the centre of the world. Since 1952, this was the route of the Bidston docks to Shotton iron ore trains, worked at the end by 9F210Os. This is 92082 coming off Birkenhead Shed for one of these workings. The ore was imported at Bidston Dock on the northern side of the dock complex. In 1952, John Summers and Sons expanded their shot and premises into a fully integrated iron and steel works. Therefore, it could make iron from ore instead of the previous method of using pig iron to make steel. 
Considerable investment in new sidings at Shotwick and at the docks was carried out and not least the upgrading of the route to take heavier trains. This is Bidston Dock. 92045 arrives with empty hoppers and marshals them in the loading point. 92045 was among the first of the three 9Fs allocated to Bidston XGC shed to supplement Robinson's 04280s in the mid-1950s. Bidston shed closed in 1963. At busy times, three ships could be unloaded in a week by giant cranes, which transferred the ore direct from the holds to the wagons. This could mean 60,000 tons. The hopper wagons were carried on two four-wheel bogies and weighed 24 tons. Their capacity was 65 tons, and therefore, in trains of 11 wagons, this could mean 84 trains a week. now backs onto a loaded train, while another 9F departs on the 13-mile journey to Shotwick sidings. The ore trains left the dock complex and had to cross over the New Brighton to Liverpool Central electrified line to take the connecting spur to Seacombe Junction. Then, on a curve, the train approached Bidston Station by Bidston West Junction. Here, delays could occur, crossing over the West Kirby to Liverpool electrified lines with its frequent service. Bidston Station was on the Wirral Railway. The line south to Harden Bridge, eventually owned by the Great Central, was open to traffic in 1896. It is on the former tracks of the Great Central that 44897 is shunting. The line went south of the Wirral Railway's lines to Bidston Goods. Another Black Five heads an engineer's crane round towards Bidston Goods Yard. Nine two one one eight is returning to Bidston docks with empties. The maximum load returning was thirty three wagons, but this was not judged on weight but on the capacity of the Bidston dock reception sidings. The passenger service along the GC route from Wrexham and on to New Brighton went over to DMU operation at the end of the 1950s. However, as late as 1965, steam could return to the route on summer bank holidays when the DMUs were strengthening the North Wales coast workings. This is XGWR Pannier Tank 4683 on one such working with five coaches.
As 4683 departs round the curve towards Seacombe Junction and on to New Brighton, an electric unit on a West Kirby train arrives. The service from Wrexham to New Brighton was begun when the Seacombe branch closed in January 1960. The service's previous destination, 4683 runs round its train at New Brighton as an EMU departs for Liverpool. Forty six eighty three heads for Wrexham over Stoughton Bank and on via Harden. She would be withdrawn from Wrexham in October nineteen sixty five. Back at Bidston, a piece of coal is pushed from the footplate of 45130, probably for the PW staff hut. Or was it just too big to go into the firebox? The train is signalled onto the XGC line towards Harden Bridge. Shunting the GC yard is Birkenhead's 44963. The yard has now vanished. Behind the signal box, the view is now dominated by the M53 mid world motorway. passes the little used level crossing on its way to Bidston Docks. Nine two zero seven three returns a little later with loaded hoppers. This spur between the West and Seacombe junctions at Bidston was on the former Wirral railway lines electrified by the LMS in 1938. Regular working over the spur ceased in 1978, but was not officially closed until November 83.
line to 073, negotiates the 15 mile per hour restriction onto the line to Shotwick. It is reasonably level to Upton, and 42942, on the rail tour seen earlier at Birkenhead docks, is getting up speed for Storton Bank ahead. Drifting downhill towards Bidston, another shot with to docks empties train. From Upton, the trains face nearly four miles continuous climbing out of the Fender Valley, hugging the contours of the land. The steepest part of the climb was a stretch of 1 in 75 at Woodchurch, where the 9Fs could be seen and heard at their best. This train, with 10 loaded hoppers, weighed in at 910 tonnes. The summit of the climb was at Heswell Hills. As another 9F runs downhill light engine, 92165 eases slightly. She was once fitted with a mechanical stoker and worked on freight between Sortley and Carlisle over the long drag. Viewed from the opposite platform, 92073 comes by, bound for Shotwick sidings. The line took the title of the North Wales and Liverpool Railway when opened in 1896 and was absorbed by the Great Central in 1905. This station was opened on the 1st of May 1898, two years into the line's existence. There were, in 1967, 55 9Fs allocated to Birkenhead Shed, five of which were ex-Crosty versions, a view from this well-kept signal box. Nine two one six zero runs back to the docks, passing a local DMU working to Wrexham or Chester Northgate. These ore trains ran under Class 8 headcoat as they were not fitted with the vacuum brake. Therefore, considerable attention was paid at Birkenhead Shed to the 9S brake gear, for considerable skill was required on the part of the engine crew and the guard in his van to control these trains on the descending inclines either side of Heswell Hills. On the 29th of April 1967, 92058 hurries a rail tour south with just six coaches, a seventh having been dropped off at Bidston due to three op boxes. It was en route for crew via Chester and Molesworth. This is one of the fully loaded trains of 11 wagons plus brake van at 1,000 tonnes.
Neston North was the next station south of Heswell Hills. On August Bank Holiday Monday 1965, Chester Shed turned out 75012 to work the 1116 New Brighton to Wrexham service, normally DMU. After taking water, she left for Wrexham about 20 minutes late. Neston North was renamed from its original Neston and Parkgate name of 1899 in 1952 at the time the other Neston station, that of Neston South, on the Hooton to West Kirby line, was also renamed. That line went under the GC line near this point. This is an empty train of hoppers heading for Bidston. Shotwick sidings was 12 and a half miles from Bidston and loaded trains were allowed 48 minutes for the run. John Summers Steelworks was on the western side of the line at Shotwick sidings. It was because of the silted up River Dee that the ore trains ran from Bidston. The steelworks had its own internal railway system, some of which was of the narrow gauge of 2 foot 6. Number 49, an 060 diesel mechanical, was built by Hudswood Badger of Leeds in 1971, shunting the coal strip mill. Number 14 on the standard gauge was a diesel hydraulic built by English Electric in 1970. These scenes were taken after the last 9F had hauled its load from Bidston. They were superseded by brush type 4s. For the last 9F hauled ore train of all on November the 6th 1967, Birkenhead Shed turned out 92203 with commemorative headboard. For this run, Sir Richard Summers, director in charge of the company and a former director of the LMS Railway, drove the train from Bidston to Shotwick. The driver and fireman were entertained to lunch at Shotton and handed a cheque to entertain their colleagues of 8H, Birkenhead Shed, who over the 15 years had worked the ore trains by steam. 92203 was within days of preservation by David Shepherd, the wildlife and locomotive artist. Fifteen years later, on the 11th of September 1982, at Foster Yeoman's Stone Terminal in Somerset, the engine successfully lifted a train of 2,143 tonnes, over twice the load of the Bidston dock trains, and equal to 24 hoppers of iron ore, a probable record for UK steam haulage. This was the last of the ore trains passing Burton Point, the station near Shotwick, which had closed in December 1955. On the same day, November the 6th, 1967, Birkenhead Shed closed to steam. Although it was adapted for diesel traction, it survived until 1985, the 150th anniversary of the GWR, one of the joint owners of the route from Chester. It was demolished in 1987. In all, 28 9Fs were withdrawn on this day and went away for scrap. Once again, the gradient out of the shed proved as slippery as ever. Steam on the Wirral went out with a bang, with the thousand-ton trains storming Storton Bank, and, perhaps, with a little help from the Birkenhead cleaning gang. <laughs>